have we accomplished so far in this series of videos? Remember that we began with an introduction to the concept of resonance. We talked about various general features of resonance, like the idea that um, a molecule does not flip back and forth between the two resonance structures. Instead, there's only one true picture, which is a kind of blend or average of the various resonance structures. All right, then after that introduction, uh, we've done a long series of, of examples, and in those examples, I gave you the electron pushing arrows, and you simply had to draw the resonance structure that was suggested by those electron pushing arrows. So what we've been doing is many, many examples where I gave you the electron pushing arrows and then you had to draw the structure that was suggested by those arrows. And the reason that we've done so many examples like that is that it's really important to be able to easily interpret electron pushing arrows. Okay, however, that's not the skill that you usually use when you're drawing your own resonance structures. When you are drawing resonance structures, you have to come up with the arrows yourself. You can't just use arrows that other people have given you. Well, that's what we now want to move into in this portion of the videos. Now we want to move into the skill of actually coming up with the electron pushing arrows for resonance yourself. But before you move on to this section of the videos, make sure that you've really mastered the previous material. If you felt that you learned something from the previous series of examples, if you missed a fair number of problems, or if they just gave you, if they, or if they just took you a long time to do, then you should not go forward. Instead, you should go back and redo the previous examples. Don't move on to the next portion of the videos until you've mastered the previous material. Now, again, our goal as we move forward in the videos is that um, now we have to learn how you can come up with your own legal resonance arrows. We have to learn how you can come up with the arrows yourself. The first skill that's going to be helpful here is to identify which of the atoms in the molecule might possibly be involved in resonance. Because many of the atoms can't be involved in resonance. So the first thing we should do is just identify which atoms might possibly be involved in resonance. Here's something to put in your notes. The atoms which might possibly be involved in resonance. Those are the atoms that have lone pairs, the atoms with pi bonds, and the atoms that have less than an octet of electrons, mainly carbocations. Again, uh, this information is the atoms which might possibly be involved in resonance. Those are the atoms with lone pairs, the atoms with pi bonds, and the atoms with less than an octet of electrons, mainly carbocations. Now is a good time to pause the video and put this in your notes. Uh, let's make a couple points about this. Now, first of all, this really just gives us the candidates for who might be involved in resonance. Sometimes something is going to fall into this list, but it still turns out that there's no legal resonance structures that we can draw, or maybe no significant resonance structures that we can draw. So that's why I say these are just the atoms that might possibly be involved in resonance. Occasionally something will be in this list, and even though it could potentially do resonance in another, atom, in another molecule, it doesn't actually have the potential for resonance in that molecule. There might be no legal or significant resonance structures. Uh, but usually, atoms that are in this list are atoms that uh, can form resonance. Another point to make, though, is of course, um, resonance takes two. There has to be two atoms to have resonance. So um, it doesn't do any good to have an atom in this list unless it's bonded to another atom in this list. So in order to have resonance, you have to have two atoms with these characteristics that are bonded to each other. Again, it doesn't do you any good if you have two atoms with these characteristics if they're not bonded to each other. Now, this last point here is that an atom that has less than eight electrons can potentially participate in resonance, but almost always, the example of that is going to be a carbocation. So I hope that you know that a carbocation um, has less than an octet of um, electrons. I don't think that we're going to go through any examples of anything besides carbocations uh, that can participate in resonance with less than an octet. So technically, I, I think there are um, a couple unusual examples of atoms with less than an octet that are not carbocations that could participate in resonance. But those are, those are really rare that that, that that type of resonance would come up in organic chemistry. So we're probably not going to cover it. So for all intents and purposes, this third criterion is just being a carbocation. 
So for all intents and purposes, the three characteristics are the atoms that might possibly be involved in resonance are an atom that has a lone pair, an atom with a pi bond, or a carbocation. We're probably not going to deal with any other atoms with less than an octet. Um, those usually don't come up when you're dealing with resonance in organic chemistry. Now, actually, I should mention there is one more type of atom that can be possibly involved in resonance. Um, but that's a little less common, so I, I want to go over that later in the series of videos. So there is one more type of atom that can be involved in resonance, but I'm not going to cover that right now. Uh, for the vast majority of cases, this is going to cover the atoms that are involved in resonance. I'd like you to take a look at this molecule and try to identify all the atoms that might possibly be involved in resonance here. Identify all the atoms that might possibly be involved in resonance in this molecule. Remember that whenever I pause a question or a problem in these videos, I'm hoping that you'll pause the video and give that a shot before you proceed. Well, um, let's start over here. Could this atom participate in resonance? Well, nitrogen does have a lone pair. By the way, you should have memorized that a nitrogen with no formal charge has one lone pair. If you don't have that memorized, you should now pause the video and make a flashcard that a nitrogen with no formal charge has one lone pair. That's something you're expected to have memorized. This does have a lone pair, but it actually really can't be involved in resonance because it's not attached to anything else that can be involved in resonance. Can this atom be involved in resonance? No. This is just a normal tetrahedral carbon. It's a normal carbon with no lone pairs, no pi bonds, not a carbocation. So clearly, this carbon cannot participate in resonance. Well then, even though this has a lone pair, it has nothing to resonate with. So that's something that we need to add to these ideas here. Um, in order to be involved in resonance, you have to have one of these three characteristics, and you have to be bonded to another atom that has one of these three characteristics. So even with the lone pair, this atom cannot participate in resonance because it's not bonded to anybody who it can resonate with, so to speak. We already said that this cannot participate in resonance. How about this carbon? Well, I hope you know that a carbon with a negative charge has a lone pair. Again, if you didn't know that, you should now stop the video and make a flashcard that a carbon with a negative formal charge has one lone pair. That's something that you're expected to know in your OCHEM class. So this has a lone pair. Um, so it can participate in resonance, especially because it's bonded to something else that can participate in resonance. This carbon has a pi bond, so it can participate in resonance, and this carbon has a pi bond, so it can participate in resonance. Now this carbon does not have any of these characteristics, so it can't participate in resonance. None of these other carbons have the right characteristics. So there's only three atoms that we should have selected as potentially participating in resonance. This carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. Now, again, note clearly why this nitrogen really can't participate in resonance. Even though it has a lone pair, it's not bonded to anybody else who can participate in resonance. Notice that it's not close enough to this carbon over here, uh, because this nitrogen is not bonded to this carbon over here. Instead, the nitrogen is bonded to this carbon, which cannot participate in resonance. So again, in order to participate in resonance, you have to have one of these three characteristics, and you have to be bonded to another atom that has one of these three characteristics. You have to be bonded to that atom. It's not good enough to be bonded to an atom that's bonded to another atom that can participate in resonance. Okay, so I hope it's clear that these are the only three atoms here that can participate in resonance. So we'll be doing a bunch of examples now where I give you molecules and you identify which ones can participate in resonance. I suggest that you put dots on every atom that can participate in resonance. Let's use a dot to indicate the atoms that can participate in resonance. Try this example. Remember your goal is to put a dot next to every atom that can possibly participate in resonance. Well, this atom has a pi bond, so I'll put a dot here. This carbon has a pi bond, so I'll put a dot here. This carbon does not have any of these characteristics. So you need to know that a carbon um, in bond line notation that has no formal charge does not have any lone pairs. So this, uh, remember that this is simply bonded to a carbon, a carbon, and two hidden hydrogens. So this cannot participate in resonance. 
This carbon has a pi bond, so it can participate in resonance, and this oxygen has a pi bond. So these four atoms can participate in resonance. Remember that these dots are just a little symbol we invented to show the atoms that can participate in resonance. They don't mean radicals. So we're not covering radicals at all in this series of videos. Since we're not talking about radicals at all in this series of videos, it's safe to use a dot to just indicate the atoms that can participate in resonance. By the way, I might mention that radicals also have a type of resonance, but that's really a kind of a separate topic. So in this series of videos, we're not covering radical resonance. In this series of videos, we're not covering resonance for radicals. We're just covering resonance for non-radicals. So again, the dots do not indicate radicals. We're just using that as a symbol for the atoms that can participate in resonance.